Hello everyone, my name is Oliming Erikus. I'm the lead developer on Portal Stories Nell, and today with me is Steven. Hey, I'm Steven Ferguson. I am the co-project lead and environment designer. And today we will be playing through Portal Stories Nell, and we'll be giving developer commentary. There is also a link available somewhere um, to the actual playthrough where the levels just go level by level, uh, which is which you should probably play if you. I don't know how to continue. Uh, if you're interested on how we made things and stuff, keep watching this. And of course, it will obviously be full of loads and loads of spoilers. Yes. So go play the game first. And then come back and watch this, if you're interested. Um, so we will begin with Chapter 1, 1952. And uh, this chapter starts with uh, tram rides, obviously heavily inspired by Black Mesa's uh, tram ride from Half-Life 1. Yeah, we threw a few references in there. Uh, this map was mostly designed by Christopher Honorati, and it's went through many, many phases from its original designs. Yes. Um... In the bottom left of the screen, you, see, you will see various names appear. Those are all the uh, core team members of the Mountain Alphabetical Order. My name's Cave Johnson. Oh boy, do I have something to show you. You're here because you're the best the world has to offer. I don't say that lightly, mind you. But yeah, so it's just a sort of a slow scene to set the mood and stuff. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff going on in various areas, like up there you can see Guy walk, and there's a, another tram crossing over there. Yeah, we like to put lots and lots of little details. Although, to be honest, I didn't really do that much in this level. The only major room that I worked on was the waterfall area coming up. And, oh, also don't forget behind you, there's the not the Half-Life with Barney. It's the man knocking on the door. Let me in, let me in. Yeah, that's a character. Point is, you're riding there, and you'll see. And uh, over here, you see um, a crow that flies away. At some point, every team member had a crow named after them in this level, and this is Chris the Crow. Do you remember where your crow was? <laughs> I believe that my crow was eating out of the trash can. So thanks for that, Chris. By the way, you're fired. <laughs> um. Upcoming here is um, a very nice song, Time and Time Again. It's written by Ian Weiss, also the um, story writer of the mod. Uh, and it's super quiet. And like, it's uh, recorded by, uh, what, in the studio, and it sounds really, really nice. Yeah, it would definitely fit into something like Fallout or something, so it certainly fits the 50s here. And uh, over here we have the old amateur turrets shooting the shooting range. Um, it's a little bit of foreshadowing. Yeah, and right now there'll be a bit of dialogue that's where Chris is getting fired over a spelling mistake, which is an actual thing that happened. He did make a sign that said stay shoyan instead of station, which we have no idea how he did because to make a texture, like obviously you have to initially design it and then convert it into VTF and stuff, and through all of that time he never realised his spelling mistake. And once we found out, it just became a running joke really, and uh, over the development of the mod, Chris has been fired at least a hundred times, if not more. Yeah. Um, also, a station reappears, but like we put, we did keep his bad overlay in the game, but put like an X through the extra O, because <laughs> it's it was during a part I think when Aperture was poor, so where they couldn't afford to get the sign redone. Uh, so here we are in um, the station, and a lot of inspiration for various things here came from Alien Isolation. It's a game. Uh, that came out last year, and it's really, really pretty. And, uh, for example, the designs of the benches with like the rounded um, plants and the uh, rotating sign are heavily inspired by that game. And the area like on the station platform with the posters like slanted in. Yes. 
If you haven't already, go play Alien Isolation because it's an amazing game. Yeah, I just wish we could have those particle effects and stuff. <laughs> and the lighting effects, yeah. So this is like time for the grand reveal, really, like... Yeah, this is a town that was supposedly built by Aperture to like house the employees and stuff, and like, it's so new it doesn't even have a name. Oh, and like, this map is filled with custom assets, a few from uh, Left 4 Dead, but there's also a lot of custom materials, and for example, the sign here obviously is... Yeah, this, this sign is very, very important, so you need to try to remember this. <laughs> because you might see it again, who knows? Yeah, and uh, yeah, there's pretty much no default portal to, well, barely any default portal to assets in this map. Oh yeah, and you just had a glimpse there of the Sleep Easy Motel, which <laughs> we always jokingly called the Sleazy Motel. Yes. I don't know if it's still the case, but for the longest time, yeah, you see a little pink glow coming from this uh, motel sign, and for the longest time, this window had a complete purple sheen, and that was all because of the sleazy motel. Again, this town has went through so many different designs, and like especially like the main feature, like the main building has just completely changed so much over and over again. Yeah. And the sky has been changed a quadrillion times. <laughs> so in here we've got lots of Jacobs, lovely artwork and posters and stuff for various Aperture stuff. And also it's really nice to know to, um, you have all these wood panelings you might recognize from World 2. But these are actually cleaner versions of what you see in game. In game, they have little smudges on them and stuff because it's, you know, aged. And over here, it's still very, very clean. And uh, this is one of my favorite jokes. It's it's been in the mod since forever, really. Uh, it says, "Do not lean on railing," and if you do, it uh, falls off. Took you like a couple of hours to do that. <laughs> you didn't want to yeah. lose. <laughs> yeah, because there's a trigger and there's more triggers and even more triggers and it's very complicated, but it's, it's a really funny thing. And here you have an amazing picture again done by Jacob of Caroline, or she's actually called Laura, and she actually did send us some reference pictures. So this is a genuine picture of Caroline, which Jake did. Yes. So it was very nice of them to send that. Absolutely. And then here we've got some like generic, like I think you got them from a free website. The, all the random posters. Yes. Like, yeah, these little ones in the wood frames are just like sort of unusual futuristic things. Yeah, and these are actually because this takes place in Michigan. These are actually the Great Michigan Lakes. Um, photos uh, in a nice picture frame, and obviously because it's the 1950s, like pictures are in black and white. So, at first, I wanted to put in a long flight of stairs that spiraled down through the old salt mines down here. And uh, once again, to give a, an indication of the scale, like, there's another tram going around here, and like, this is clearly, clearly not something somewhere you've been before. Yeah, it shows just how big it is, obviously, and like, that is the best way to get around to just go on trams. So it's kind of similar to Black Mesa. In fact, they probably stole the idea from Aperture. Ah, <laughs> obviously. And here we have our lift shaft, which again sort of is another scene that like really sets the scale of Aperture itself. And this was one of the first maps that I made like a very, very long time ago when you first <laughs> invited me onto the team. Yes. And this has also been improved upon and it's, it's looking absolutely stunning. 
Yeah, oddly enough, one of the reasons I was inspired to improve a lot more was after Harry, Harry Halligan, who did the music, like made like an awesome piece of music for this, and I felt that the level really didn't match up to the music, so I like spent hours and like drastically tweaked the level. And then he also did the same to the soundtrack, because he had to then... <laughs> he then so it was a very positive arms race, really. Like, I was just there and I just saw this become more awesome and more awesome, and I just smiled. Like you make you make more dramatic epic music and I'll make the level more epic. Oh, okay, sure, go ahead, have fun. <laughs> and this is uh, also again a nod to Portal 2, where they have similar posters. Uh, let's focus this first. Ah uh, yes, here's the big dramatic reveal. I designed like a sort of crevice type thing that would open up to just sort of have this expanding view and all of a sudden it just hits you like the massive scale. And again, like with the drama, like if you look out there's little lifts and all sorts of things like moving around and stuff, like it'd be very difficult to spot everything all in your first go. And like there are people over there and like all over the place stuff. But yeah, as I was saying about this sign, like it's specifically designed for this and like this shows like it's the very first um, um, chapter in and like you are like somewhere in between here and keep your legs inside the elevator. Just don't ask about shaft zero and minus one. <laughs> no, they know we don't, we don't want to. <laughs> But uh, uh, and also a fun fact, because obviously you're confined to the elevator, the, it was quite interesting making this level because it's, everything in it is so incredibly fake, like if you were to no clip outside this elevator even a tiny bit you'd see that everything just ends, like it's all pretty much perfectly made to fit your pew cone from inside the elevator. Yeah, and like, um, you see these numbers in the background, they were a total pain to work with because they didn't show up for some reason and eventually Stephen fixed them up and now they show all the distance and it looks really, really awesome. Oh uh, yeah, they had a terrible like fade-in distance thing where they would fade out after like only a couple of hundred units. They would just completely be invisible and then it kind of like ruined <laughs> all the like just random detail I put in. And fun fact, you'll see a lot of like number details like used everywhere with the whole game and like for the most part a lot of them were actually usually like significant in some way like we would have picked a date or something, some number that's a specific meaning to us and like it makes it a lot more fun, like going back and like seeing all the numbers that we put in. Yeah, it's it's also really funny, like in some levels, um, I like we we put in dates, like the dates we were working, like working on them or something, and um, one of the maps in Past Power, I noticed the number a few months ago, and like I realized, oh, that was a year ago. Like it's uh, it's been a long time working on this mod. <laughs> yes. Well, I think this was like my. This was only my second level that I made, but it was like the first sort of like transition y style thing. Because my first level was to have a kind. But that's a long way away from here. Yeah, it will probably take uh, a few more hours, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, we're not like sprinting through it, we're taking our time and giving our commentary, which we hope you enjoy. And then once again over here, oh, I missed the dramatic reveal But once again, we have the sign here, and at first you were at the, at the, the top, and then you were somewhere in the middle, and now you're on the bottom. Yeah. And we do have quite a slow start to the mob, but we wanted to get a lot of setup and like story setup and like, you know, really show off what Aperture was like. I think the biggest disappointment for us was not being able to include NPCs that you could talk to. I mean, it has been mentioned already in a review that, you know, you can't speak to the NPCs and like, that's really definitely for the best. If you were to go up and like see the humans up close, they're just horrible and Valve like broke NPCs basically for Portal 2. Yeah, the, so. the, those entities are just not in the Portal 2 engine, so we cannot use the characters that, for example, Half-Life 2 did. Yeah. Essentially, they're just walking props that are being dragged along a line. <laughs> And yeah, this whole area, like, again, has went through so many changes, like, the original had, like, these giant castle doors, it was one of the first things I seen when I joined the project, and, like, I, I completely I had to overhaul this whole, like, cave area, and then I expanded even further with this whole waterfall section, mostly because I, I love the fact that those domes have, like, a destroyed version, which I could then reuse for the next level. Yeah. 
Yeah, what's really cool about this level is um, you now get to see the level like in its full glory with nice lights and everything and spotlights and everything and then the interior is nice and clean and it's all really nice and pretty and um, once you transition to the next level it's all destroyed and originally it were very sort of they were very very subtle changes like portraits changing but yeah you just actually be one single map and it used to be like just the ridiculous like logic of all these entities swapping and it was just so bad but then i as the person who has to destroy everything as the environment designer <laughs> went and just tried smashed up the place yeah yeah that was fun though like i did the same thing for time for the ending but it's also a long way away yeah don't worry those doors won't kill you the safety on their guns is on and uh, like over here you can already see the areas you will be going to in the next level and um, you, yeah, can, same upstairs. you can walk upstairs here and explore everything already. Yeah. Our, basically our excuse for why there's not many people about is that it's like really late at night because that's when they wanted you here for the sleep test but and just have Cave Johnson directing you around but again like that's an unfortunate limitation put on us like just because we weren't able to put humans in which would have loved to of course but you know it's just we had to do the best with what we had and like the alternative would have just been a lot worse like I'd rather have no humans than awful humans. And yes, this particular seat, I put in as a joke when I was detailing this level. I just imagined that there was just this seat here that you would just look and stare at Cave Johnson. Like, I have no idea if anyone's already, already going to notice the fact that there's just a seat looking at this picture, but, you know, just a little detail. Yeah, it's a very, very fun detail, in my opinion. And we should be able to just jump down. Lucky you're wearing your long fall boots because you're well prepared. Ah, yes. Of course. And then over here, um, they're, they're harmless turds. Um, just once again to show them off and uh, so we can have a little joke with them <laughs> in the next level. And in here, this again, this level was Mother Redound, and I know what Anna wants to talk about here. <laughs> but yeah, this started off really small, and I got bigger and bigger, and then I like just ripped the entire walls off the side and just like expanded it hugely and sort of based off the one in Portal 2 but like more sort of old fashioned and stuff. Yes and um, for some reason um, this level this used to be a separate instance so you map within a map in the uh, editor and these chairs were part of this part of the level and so it ended up that there is another chair but it's exactly in this box and we only discovered that months later and we just decided to keep it because it's very Yeah, so fun. if you know clip inside that box you'll find a chair. Yes. <laughs> and uh, then over here we have uh, one of the two world portals in the game. Hmm. And the bed which was made by Rachel. She did a good job. Like it was based on like some loads of like medical beds and all sorts of stuff from the fifties. It's super creepy. And uh, yeah, we can sleep. And uh, whoops, let me get some uh, SFM action. Yeah. So this was done by Harry, and he did all the cinematics. And for the most part, I designed all the levels for the cinematics. But Harry, of course, does all his wonderful lighting and. All the sorts of stuff that you can do in SFM that we wish we could do. <laughs> like having nine projected textures. But, yeah. <laughs> he did an amazing job with this. Yes. And unfortunately, some of the quality got lost in the compression to get this in engine. Um, but there's no real way around that. Yeah, so as typical with Aperture stuff, it goes wrong and you're you're asleep, basically. So obviously everything that happened was pre-Portal 1 and now we're like in between. You wake up like in the middle of Portal 1 and Portal 2, basically. Uh, pr like pretty close to the start of Portal 2. Yeah, pretty much, uh, as it's going to be spoilers anyway, the game takes place like seconds probably before Portal 2 starts. 
And also, fun fact, next time we get to that loading screen, we can point out something funny about it, which has been fixed. Yes. This is obviously done pre-release, as you can tell. <laughs> yes. By that lovely chapter name. Oh, um, <laughs> Yeah, we've got like a sort of our final build ready with just like just a few minor fixes to it. Yeah, and that will be the release that you guys play, but this is a few days earlier. So, uh, yeah. Um, that's pretty much chapter one. We'll stop the video and start with chapter two. Uh, so you can just click that. And uh, thanks for watching. Yep.